Best Irish music on irishradio.org with Jerry Byrne. Irish Radio, I'm Jerry Byrne. Been speaking to uh, many of the great, the good and the talented of Irish music and entertainment since the uh, onset of uh, COVID and lockdown and all the rest of it. I've got a gentleman now who's uh, incredibly well known uh, in the um, Irish music scene uh, as a... Uh, a musician, also uh, as a record, recording producer with his own studio. He's also a singer and uh, all around good egg in uh, entertainment and uh, music. I'm delighted to say hello from County Donegal, Brian Kerrigan. Brian, how are you? Hello, Jerry. How are you, Kevin? Not bad at all. Brian, uh, tell me this. How did, how did you uh, start off in music? Uh, that would be me, mum. Uh, my mum had a band on the road uh, years ago called Joan and the Silver Wings and uh, since we were able to walk uh, we were tripping over keyboards and accordions and one thing and another at home so uh, like I have another two brothers that play music as well so we, we didn't miss Alright, so you, you you were sort of born and born and bred on it all Mm-hmm, born and bred on country music, yeah Excellent stuff. Uh, now, listen. You've gone on. Uh, you, you know, you, you've gone on to uh, uh, be a highly accomplished and highly regarded musician. Thank you very much. It was true. I mean, uh, uh, you, you know, people uh, people have said it to me. You know about uh, uh, about your talents, and uh, you also do not alone that, but you also do uh, singing as well. I do. Yeah. Mm hmm. Right now, tell me that you you probably one of the things that you're best known for, Brian, is your recording studio, which is regarded as absolutely top caliber, top rate studios in Ireland. Oh, thank you, thank you again, Jerry. Yeah, I've been very lucky, uh, and the studio, the studio has been going well. Um, obviously, with COVID and stuff at the minute, it's it's uh, I can't really have anyone in, but um, you know, I was lucky to record some uh, some really big names and a lot of names really you know over the last maybe seven or eight years indeed so i mean you've uh, you know so many many people have recorded uh, material i mean for example the last mick flavin album was done in your studio you've done uh, albums of trisha mcguire uh, jason travers and just numerous numerous others mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and i also just uh release marcy's did a staff single um we done the vocals before before COVID, the first COVID came on, and uh, she just brought that out last week. And uh, of course, Norman Borland as well. Uh, uh, currently working on a new album for Norman. Excellent stuff. Excellent. Uh, tell me this, Brian. Mm. You, when 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 you when you start, uh, you know, when somebody comes to you to uh, to record an album, but where do you start? Uh, the first thing probably would be. Uh, find out what kind of songs they're kind of wanting and what ideas they would have and then um, I would try and give as much input as I could and what direction we should go with musicians and you know uh, it's actually a very fun environment it's a very fun environment to be in there in a recording studio and uh, most most people that come into the record actually enjoy the experience so much Yes, I, mean, I think a lot of that has got to be down to yourself. It's got to be how you sort of, uh, you know, steer the whole thing and and uh, mm. you can offer ideas and uh, you, you know and and can to be you can be very creative. I mean, there, there, there's no two people uh, in uh, are similar. No, that's it. And like, I'm very lucky to have have some great musicians, fantastic musicians there that that I can call on any time in the world just deliver a great job for me too. You know. Indeed, uh, that makes my job a bit easier. Indeed. Now, the the other thing about it is, of course, that recording has has changed drastically. Uh, you know, uh, mm-hmm. over the years with technology, I mean, it's, it's it it bears no resemblance to what it would have, uh, you know, twenty or thirty years ago. No, no, definitely, that's definitely true. Like I use, uh, I would use some uh, musicians from over in Nashville, there, you know, and it's amazing that you can send a track over and they play their parts and send you back their parts and. It just works so well. Indeed, indeed. I mean, uh, back years ago, none of that would have uh, ever, ever have been possible. And now it's, it's, uh, you know, it's an everyday thing you can do. Mm, that's amazing. Indeed. So, and uh, when it comes to uh, you, also, I mean, you do the, the the in the recording studio and all that. You do the final uh, mix of the uh, of the album. Mm-hmm. I do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
And, uh, it, it, you know, at that stage, I mean, do you ever be doing sort of a final mix of an album and think, uh, hey, hold on, I need, uh, we need to put in uh, some more instrumentation on that of, uh, you know, another guitar or something like that? You could be actually, uh, you could be sitting and maybe have a, a mix 90% done and think, oh, this really needs something else. It just needs something else. And, you know, uh, just to try to finish the couple of weeks ago for a guy called Gary Mangan. Um, I was sitting mixing the day and, uh, you know, I was, just felt the track needed something else. And I started it up for a while. There was enough lead instruments on it. So I thought, I wonder if banjo work on this. And just, just like that. You know, when you're so close to when you're so close to having it finished, and then uh, the banjo actually turned out to be one. It turns out to be like one of the main instruments on it because it's on from start to finish. Right. Things like that. You know, things like that can happen. Indeed, uh, it, uh, it it must be it must be very very interesting. You know, when you're you know when you're tackling a project. Uh, uh, you know, recording for somebody to, uh, uh, you know, working out what, uh, you know, what will, you know, will I need there, and you're all the time looking to sort of g- uh, get it to the very mm. best, very best level you possibly can. Exactly, yeah. Like, uh, you know, another another story is uh, since lockdown started, I started doing an album for a woman from, uh, I think she's from outside London, and uh, decided so since COVID started, I should say, but. Uh, She's doing 12 original songs, so um, I was able to figure out for her to do her guide vocals from London on her phone, right. and uh, I would send her over the guide piano track, if you, if you understand me, and she would do the guide vocals on her phone, and we made me back her vocals, and the whole 12 tracks is built, and I obviously hasn't been able to come over with to do her final vocals, but it's amazing the things she can come up with. Indeed so. Indeed so. Truly, truly, mm. truly incredible that, uh, you know, the things like that. I think that's one of the big things that, uh, it, you know, has changed our world. And I think uh, lockdown has, uh, and COVID has, has, has shone, uh, you know, if you want a spotlight on it, is the sheer advances mm. in, in technology and in communications. That's amazing, eh? It never feels to amaze me at all. Indeed so, indeed so. Now you also do, I mean, mm. you, you, you're also, as a, as well as the, the studio, you're also, a, you know, an accomplished musician. I mean, you've played with many, many uh, well-known artists. I have, yeah. I've been, I've been very lucky in my career, and I have been very lucky. Well, I don't, I don't know, is it, uh, is it luck, Brian? I think you've got to have a, you got to have that little bit of talent in there now, for, uh, otherwise you wouldn't uh-huh. be in the band. Well, uh, look, I was lucky enough to, I was lucky enough to do the, South Coast of America with Robert Mazzell and I was lucky enough to do um, three or four Jimmy Buckley Spanish trips and uh, I've done a, a good few trips to Glasgow with Highland Radio and stuff and I suppose the more shows you do like that the more people with maybe influence hear you and put you on their shows and it's just it's kind of built from that you know Indeed, that's excellent. Absolutely excellent stuff. Mm. Uh, I'm sure. Mm. I'm, I'm sure at the minute, uh, uh, with the lockdown and all the rest of it, you must miss, uh, you know, meeting the people and uh, and uh, indeed, uh, be, 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 of course, normally working as well in your studio uh, is not possible. Yeah. Well, look, it's been uh, it's, it wasn't too bad for maybe the first six or seven months, but in the last maybe four months, it's, it's been difficult. You know, for me as a person, not to be able to go and entertain or go and, you know, be self and Mike Flavin, but I've done a lot of work together pre COVID, uh, you know, it was two piece and uh you know, it's it's been tough now for the last four months. Indeed. Indeed so. Indeed so. Mm. So, uh, but, uh, you know, th- things are looking brighter, uh, you know, at this time than they were, say, this time last year. So, uh, you know, things things will get back. Uh, it's every 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 epidemic has, uh, uh, that has come along, it's uh, also gone. So, uh, you know, we'll fi- yeah. f- fingers crossed. But, Brian, listen, it's been lovely. Fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed for it all. But, Brian, listen, lovely to catch up with you. And uh, I wish you uh, all the very, very best. And, uh, listen, stay safe. Thank and stay you very home. much, sir. A real pleasure, a real pleasure, and uh, Brian. Thank you for playing. Thank you for playing my stuff, also. A real pleasure, Brian. A real pleasure. Listen, stay safe and stay well. All right, Jerry. Thank you.